Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's uh, fur video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next week to 10 days for today's fur video. Day 10 will take us to the 1st of January to New Year's Day and we'll be able to extend out beyond that. We have said GFS and ECM ensembles over a couple of weeks. Have a look at CFS E2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks, which gets us well into the middle to second half of January. I shall get on that for you in a moment. Just say that first video is saying was our 7 a.m. upload. And uh, we've also released the USA forecast, so check out those two videos if you would uh, like to do that. Please like, share, subscribe on the videos, and thank you so much, everybody. Uh, for doing this uh, forecast, so it's going to be live streaming for half an hour, a uh, 13K celebration live stream coming up from 6.30 to 7 p.m. Uh, this evening. We'll be giving away our Amazon voucher uh, with that, so uh, 30 pound Amazon voucher giveaway will be uh, happening from 6.30 till 7pm this evening. We'll have a quick look at 12Z in that uh, update for you, of course, as well. But the main reason for the live stream of half an hour is going to be uh, to, uh, you know, to um, give away the voucher. So uh, I'll see you then, hopefully. I want to say thank you so much to uh, our latest PayPal donator. Thank you so much to Fiona Hinkley. Thank you so much, Fiona, for the uh, donation. It's incredible. Thank you so much for doing that uh, for, uh, for Gasworth Viz. Amazing. If you'd like to become a uh, donor for Gasworth Viz like Fiona has done, then uh, all you need to do is go to Gasworth's PayPal page. You can find the link in the description with the uh, video. Sign to your PayPal account. I mean, donate, donate whatever money you would like to Gasworth Viz. And uh, thank you so much, everybody, uh, for doing that for Gaza. You're going to get a shout out in the videos if you do that. So we'll say uh, thank you very much to you. As long as you want one. Some people want to stay anonymous. That's absolutely fine. So um, however you want your uh, your uh, mention, your shout out, or even if you don't want one. You know, just say thank you so much. Thank you so much to all of you uh, for doing that uh, for, for, uh, for Gaza. Well, this. So thank you to all our patrons, all our channel members, all our super chatters. It really is unbelievable the support that you give to me and uh, to, uh, to Gaza. Well, this. So thank you so much to all of you and a special thank you to Fiona Hinkley for the uh, latest donation. Uh, right, let's begin the video then. Uh, so, we'll see how this goes down, shall we? We're going to start off section temperature. The CT is currently standing at 6.0. That's an anomaly of 1.2 degrees. That's going to drop a little bit more into the upper thighs and then will rise over Christmas. And the reason that's going to rise, and this will be a very mild December now, is this. Check this out. This is the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks for Northampton. Thought we'd choose uh, the uh, local town to be, say RIP to the cold Christmas. The red line is the 30 year upper air temperature average for Northampton. We're starting off mild average at the moment, though an inversion is taking place. We will see the upper air temperatures coming down as we go to Christmas and beyond, but staying above average now. No cold spell. Where's the cold spell gone? It's been eradicated. Overnight, we still have one or two outliers here. One or two cold outliers still clinging to it. But a huge and enormous shift has taken place within the GFS ensembles over the uh, overnight. And uh, now we are facing uh, away from the far north and east of Scotland. Anyway, we're facing a mild Christmas and an even milder New Year, turning exceptionally mild around the New Year and into the first week of January. A huge shift to uh, mild there has taken place with the GFS and its ensembles. All of those cold GFS runs and our cold GFS ensemble members. You know, it looks like they were wrong, and uh, it looks like a big old dramatic flip has gone on here within 72 hours of Christmas. So, precipitation-wise, there's going to be a reasonable amount of dry weather for the next couple of days, and then it turns very, very unsettled over Christmas into the new year. So, it's going to become really mild, exceptionally mild, around the new year, and will be very wet, potentially, as well. Obviously, <coughs> excuse me, obviously, we have to think about the possibility of, uh, of, of the New Year floods there, maybe, uh, from those exceptional temperatures combined with, um, you know, all of that rainfall. 
Um, let's have a look at the uh, sea level pressure, shall we? So uh, this is how it's looking. So we're starting off reasonably high in pressure at the moment, 1,020 millibars. Going to drop below 1,000 millibars over Christmas. A very, uh, you know, gradual increase. Pressure might take place, though still relatively low in towards uh, the new year. Uh, and then as far as the two metre temperatures are concerned, well, they're holding up now. Uh, we do still have one or two that are becoming colder down here. But overall, uh, the temperatures are staying uh, reasonably mild uh, right way through to Christmas and then becoming exceptionally mild uh, into the new year, somewhere between 10 and 15 degrees. That's service temperatures, by the way, um, into uh, the new year. So uh, maybe we'll be breaking mild records for the new year. It's possible we might do that. And snow row, where has the snow gone? Where have the snow spikes gone? Uh, there's one or two still left around Boxing Day, but basically they've gone. Uh, and a few again around the New Year, just there again, they're outliers, possibly one or two into early January. But to be honest, that is a massive downgrade uh, for, for, uh, for Northampton. And it's indicative of most parts of uh, the country. There's been a big old downgrade with this cold Christmas that is taking place overnight. I'm afraid for those of you that wanted it. Remember, we always say any forecast beyond uh, a few days is fraught with danger. But this has been absolutely ridiculous, to be honest. But we get to three days out and uh, we see this sort of shit. But anyway, let's move on. Temperature anomalies on the 22nd to the 30th of December. A bit colder than average for Scotland still. But for Ireland, England and Wales, we are now facing a milder than average week. Precipitation anomalies from the 22nd of December to the 30th could be a little bit wet and average in the south, but to drive an average up in the north. The latest wind flow map from EarthNoldSchool.net shows low pressure in the Atlantic is encroaching, and uh, that's what's ruining the cold Christmas. So this is how the uh, UK Met, for what it's worth with these models, uh, this is how the UK Met is looking for midnight on Boxing Day, where we have low pressure moving in from off the Atlantic Ocean. Where did the blocking go? Well, it's still there around Greenland, but it is massively reduced on what was predicted a few days ago. So that's how the upper air temperatures look for uh, midnight on Boxing Day. Most parts of Ireland, England and Wales now within this mild air. Cold air is across Scotland still, but gets no further southwards than that. Into the 27th of December, this is when we should have all been within cold air. Now the low pressure just sitting over top of the country. So instead of that cold air moving southwards, actually it retreats away northwards. And uh, it's just stuck across the far north Scotland, whilst most areas are looking relatively mild. And then heading up towards the uh, new year, well, it stays unsettled. Further bouts of rain, that's a nice looking area of low pressure. That will bring risk of some very wet weather. Maybe, you know, into a bit of a cold easterly for Scotland. I'll say no more about that. I've had enough of these easterly, phantom easterlies, to be honest. So, uh, just looks mild and wet, really, up towards the new year. This average GFS midnight run is uh, looking. And, uh, again, on Christmas Day, we've got high pressure to the north of Scotland blocking, or trying to block things out. Low pressure to the southwest. So this is how things set up as we go through to uh, midnight on Boxing Day. So low pressure coming in off the Atlantic. But no cold air, except across Scotland. We've got minus five Zales iceberg through there. But for Ireland, England, and Wales, we're within that mild air from the south. And uh, that retreats away northwards as we go into 27th of December. Instead of coming southwards, it retreats north. And so... So we look like being very wet, but also mild over Christmas. And that carries on then in towards the New Year. And in fact, it becomes exceptionally mild by New Year's Eve. High pressure sets up over France and Spain and drags up the air somewhere south of uh, the Azores or Madeira. And uh, we carry that on into New Year's Day as well, which of course is day 10. So, uh, you know, we could be looking at temperatures around the New Year, around 14, 15 degrees. Into the first week of January, these exceptionally mild southwest winds go on. And uh, still a little bit unsettled. High pressure tries to build back perhaps by the 7th of January. Uh, this is how the uh, GFS 6Z is looking. Again, lots of high pressure 
to our north and east, but uh, the cold air of Scandinavia is kept there because the Atlantic is just too strong to allow that cold air in. Upper air temperatures, 6 a.m. on Christmas Day look like that. Minus 5 cells, ice world to Scotland and northeastern England. Ireland, England, Wales looking very mild. As we go through to Boxing Day, uh, again, low pressure is to the south and west. High pressure wants to block to the northeast, but is unable to do so. And that cold air is coming southwards through Christmas Day, as was expected, like yesterday, uh, actually starts retreating back northwards again. And so we go to 27th of December, we're looking exceptionally wet here, with deep low pressure bringing heavy bouts of rain, maybe floods, and uh, also very, very mild conditions as well. Look at those upper air temperatures. They look uh, really, really mild as we go through into the early part of next week. Heading on up towards day 10. Again, we draw up this extremely mild southwesterly wind. Up comes the air from the uh, Azores. And uh, there we go. Day 10, New Year's Day. Looks uh, really, really mild uh, with uh, bouts of rain in the north and west. Mainly dry in the southeast. In fact, probably quite spring-like, I would have thought, for southern and uh, eastern areas. With temperatures maybe at around 15 degrees or something like that. Heading on in towards uh, the first week of January. Again, the southwest winds keep piling in with these areas of low pressure. So, uh, very wet, but also mild through the first week of January. Now, the icon model is uh, looking like this. Now, this is the model that's probably come out of all of this fiasco a little bit better than any other model. And it's never really been that keen on, uh, you know, it's never really been that keen on, on cold weather over Christmas. So, uh, I reckon this is probably the one that comes out with its dignity still intact. All of the others... You know, let's at least set about those are better. Uh, but this is how the icon is looking for Christmas Day. So, you know, still going with this idea of, of generally mild weather away from Scotland on Christmas Day. That's the upper air temperatures for midnight on Christmas Day. If we go through uh, 24 hours, that's how we look. And again, you see the cold air just kept to pay across eastern parts of Scotland. Most areas are relatively mild. And that's how icon has looked all the way along. Uh, with this, to be honest, and uh, and yeah, so uh, you know, Icon, I think, comes out of this uh, of this fiasco a little bit better than all of the other models. Just try to get a little bit cooler there uh, around the 28th of December, but uh, I don't think that's going to last very long. As uh, low pressure and these exceptional southwest winds are moving in between Christmas and the New Year. That's perhaps the one to keep an eye on. Icon, maybe Icon's got it all sorted. Uh, GM looks like this. Now, the GM is just about hanging on to this cold Christmas by its fingertips. These are the upper air temperatures for midnight on Christmas Day. Very mild for Ireland and England and Wales, Scotland, uh, or mild for Ireland, England Wales, Scotland, cold. Uh, this does then bring me easterly in through the course of Christmas Day still and moves this cold air southwards. So, uh, there's a minus five cells ice where I'm suggesting maybe a bit of a snow event there. Overnight, Christmas night into Boxing Day across northern parts of England. Then we all go to those cold northeast winds by the 27th of December as the minus 5 south ice firm moves southwards. Now, what I'd say about it is I'd expect GM is, you know, just the last to pick up on this uh, flip. And so I would have thought by the 12Z tonight, uh, GM will also be in line with all other models in showing, uh, you know, cold, uh, um, much milder weather. Uh, around the Christmas period and also wetter as well. As it is heading into New Year, it looks like that. So uh, low pressure piling in from the Atlantic and and, uh, and it's reducing the cold spell over Christmas anyway, has done that. Um, and I would expect by, mid, by the 12Z set that will be released this evening, it will be in line with all other models uh, looking mild for Christmas and probably exceptionally mild for New Year. And then uh, ECM looks like that. Again, high pressure to our northeast, low pressure to our west. ECM's not done too bad with this. For a while it was going for a cold Christmas, but it did back off um, quite a few days ago now. I think it's at the end of last week that the ECM started backing on, off from this. So so maybe the icon comes out better. I think, uh, followed by the ECM, uh, GFS, GM, UK Met, those models have completely failed with this. Uh, this is how the uh, ECM is looking for midnight on Christmas Day. Generally mild for Ireland, England, Wales, cold into Scotland and northeastern England. Uh, and then as we go through to Boxing Day, instead of the cold coming south, which actually retreats northwards, and uh, the mild air takes over, turns very wet and unsettled, and exceptionally mild as we move up towards the new year, actually bring the plus 10 Celsius ice of uh, 
in from the Azores there, uh, which would not look out of place in June or July, um, but in January is, uh, is very, very warm. Uh, the Super Precipitation Forecast based on that ECM run from Tobetshow.com. We've got rain advancing eastwards today. That might be the only sleet and wet snow that a lot of people get, to be honest, as, uh, as we move this in. And uh, there will be a little snow across Scotland on Christie, but otherwise we're just looking at rain, which to be fair, the ECM has been showing, you know, uh, consistently for some days now, to be honest. Um, so, so plenty of rain, uh, something heavy, and, uh, and becoming extremely mild as well by the new year. These are the yachts on the table within the ECM Ensemble today for day 10, which gets us to New Year's Day. 20 members of the ECM Ensemble to have low pressure, or have high pressure, I should say, over to the south, low pressure out to the west, and we'll draw up this exceptionally mild southwesterly wind for New Year. That includes the patrol and the operation run 20, uh, with high pressure again from the south, trying to reach northward towards non block Despite non blocking absolutely no use to us to get anything colder in. This is just drawing up mild air again from the southwest. This option here, 11, does have high pressure over to the north. That will be the coldest option. We'll be bringing in the wind from the east. But as I say, I think we've all had enough of these phantom easterlies now. Uh, in two weeks' time, uh, these are the options that we've got. It gets to the 6th of January. 25 members of the East South Sons bring low pressure in off the Atlantic. So mild, wet and windy. Uh, 15 with high pressure over to the east country, mainly dry and probably very mild, drawing up wind from the south. 8 with high pressure to our north and reaching back to Greenland and will bring in the winds from the northeast, so that would be cold, of course. And 3 uh, again with high pressure to the north, and that's bringing in the wind from the east. So a minority option to turn cold in the first week of January. Uh, but again, after recent days, I think the less said about that, the better. And then, uh, finally, uh, we've got CFSG2, means the 500 millibar heights break down week peers. The first week peer takes us from the 22nd, 28th of December. The coming week, we'll have high pressure blocking to the north with low pressure to the south. The winds will be coming in from an uh, easterly direction, potentially, or they want to, but actually, it will be the low pressure in the Atlantic that overrides the blocking and uh, so despite that massive northern blocking, it really is a large area of northern blocking. The Atlantic, the warm weather, the warm temperatures, just too strong and override any potential for cold and keep us mild right way up to New Year. Uh, this is how week two is looking. It's the 29th of uh, December to the 4th of January. Low pressure coming in off the Atlantic. High pressure around Spain. That has wind in from the west. So that's going to be pretty mild. Wet and windy. Uh, whoops, I'm going to go there. I'm going to go there. Week uh, three will be the 5th to be 11th of January. High pressure just down to our west there. Low pressure in across northern uh, Scandinavia. And with that, we're bringing in wind from like a westerly direction. Yeah, it could be a little bit chilly. Might be one or two overnight frosts. And then uh, week four will be the 12th through to the 18th of January with high pressure just to our west. Looking pretty mild, bringing in the winds from the west. Notice the northern blocking disappears. Not low pressure around Greenland, Iceland. So absolutely no sign of anything particularly cold as we move into January. Probably getting milder. Right, that's it then. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, uh, please can smash the like button. Make sure you sub to the channel. Thank you so much for doing that. Tell your friends to subscribe as well. You're going to be able to see future web content if you do that. And uh, drop a comment. Let's know what you think about this and all of our videos. And I wonder what the comments are going to say after this fiasco. Uh, anyway, there we go. We can only go by what the data shows. And the data was consistently showing uh, a cold crystal bit with lots of wobbling and toing and throwing. But, uh, but that's it. So uh, our cold Christmas is cancelled. And uh, away from North, North Scotland, we'll still get a cold Christmas. That has, has to be said. So if anybody in like the North of Scotland, we're not ignoring you. You will get a cold Christmas up there, I think. Hopefully, it may never retreat, retreat away in the end. Um, but for the rest of us, it looks like we're in for a relatively mild and increasingly wet, maybe rather stormy uh, period uh, from Christmas and over uh, Christmas between Christmas and the New Year. Right, so we're going to be back at uh, 6.30 when we will be giving away our £30 Amazon voucher. There it is. So somebody will be winning that at uh, 6.30 tonight. Now have a look at the 12Z. 
Um, I will see what it's showing, if you want to. Uh, but for this video, and I think we remember this one for quite some time, that's all for now, and thanks for watching.